Hello and welcome to the Beat Cancer Answer, brought to you by BeatCancer.org, the Center for Advancement in Cancer Education. We believe that 90% of all cancers could be eliminated through environmental and lifestyle choices alone, and science agrees. Unfortunately, most people don't know it, so we provide the education that can help you prevent, cope with, and beat cancer through diet, lifestyle, and other immune-boosting approaches. On every podcast, we will feature an expert who can teach us how to become part of that 90% who could prevent getting diagnosed with cancer. If you already have cancer, we have empowering information for you too. Over the past 35 years, we have helped thousands of cancer patients get back into the driver's seat when it comes to their personal journey of healing cancer and preventing future reoccurrence. Listen now as BeatCancer.org founder, Dr. Susan Silberstein interviews Dr. Veronique Desonier on natural, safe, and effective ways to prevent and heal breast cancer. I'm Dr. Susan Silberstein, and I have the great pleasure today of uh, introducing to you Dr. Véronique de Saunier, better known for obvious reasons as Dr. V. Uh, and she is the founder of the website BreastCancerConqueror.com and also best-selling author of Heal Breast Cancer Naturally. Dr. V has practiced in the wellness field since 1979, specializing in chiropractic, bioenergetics, meridian stress analysis, homeopathy, and digital thermography. After 30 years in active practice, she decided to retire, and I know that's a relative term, (laughs) uh, and devote her time to sharing her personal non-toxic story of breast cancer healing with others. Her years of experience and her research have culminated in the seven essentials which is a step-by-step coaching program that unravels the mystery of healing the body. Her website and her personal healing journal have touched the lives of thousands of women around the globe. You have also written several blog posts for us already, and we are absolutely delighted to be able to speak with you in depth today, Dr. V. Thank you so much for having me and for sharing my message of hope. We love it. We love it. So if you would, be kind enough to tell us about your personal health journey and why you're so passionate about sharing this message of hope to women. Well, my my journey really started uh, way back in 1983. I'd been in practice for a few years, and uh, I was real excited about bringing wellness to the world. But then in 1983, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, oh, wow. and that was really quite a a gut-wrenching experience because the doctors gave him absolutely no hope and sent him home to die, which he did in about six weeks. But during that, during that time, I, I just, you know, there was something in my gut that was just gnawing at me. I just knew that something could be done. And the, the, you know, the medical doctors had given up hope on him. So I started, you know, doing some research back then, 1983, no internet. So, you know, went to the library, started calling various cancer clinics, which were few and far between back then. And I came to realize that something could have been done for my father, but unfortunately for him, it was too late. So when I went back to my practice, I started applying many of these principles and the things that I'd learned through that research and started seeing amazing things happen in my patients. I mean, things like uh, rheumatoid arthritis and MS and lupus and cancer and allergies, all these things were reversing because my patients were now applying, you know, the laws of nature and were taking responsibility for their, their health and their lifestyle. Um, Ten years later, my mother's diagnosed with breast cancer, and she decided to have a lumpectomy, and she did the traditional radiation, which, you know, over-radiated her breast, and it was red hot and blistered almost till the day she died. But then she didn't want to do chemo, so she came to see her daughter, Dr. V, in Georgia, and uh, she applied the anti-cancer protocol, and she never had an issue with cancer again. So I was really seeing how, you know, these things were were working. But uh, the big aha moment for me was um, in 2004. I'd been in practice for 25 years and I was um, jumped in the shower, typical day, you know, headed to work. And I felt that lump in my left breast. And I just knew innately, you know, in my gut that it was not a benign, benign cyst or anything like that. So 
So long story short, I just, uh, you know, really had to uh, dig deep and look at my at myself and, and ask myself a lot of questions. You know, how could somebody like me and why would somebody like me develop breast cancer? I mean, I, I was the one who was teaching all these wellness and health principles. And I realized that there were some pieces of the puzzle that I was missing, which what, you know, which led me to create what I call the seven essentials, you know, seven basic steps that if you follow, you never have to fear cancer or any disease for that matter. Well, that's where the bless in the mess comes along. You know, your, st- <laughs> your story and mine are so similar. Mine started in uh, 1976 when my young husband was diagnosed with a very rare and terminal cancer. And I often say, there was no internet. I had to get on the telephone. I had to get into the medical libraries. I had to call clinics all over the world to try to find resources that would be of help to him. But again, like in the case of your dad, uh, there was no time. He never got out of the hospital long enough to Mm. apply anything that I had learned. Um, And so... I didn't want to bury with him what I had researched. And so I gave birth to the cancer organization known as BeCancer.org. And we've been sharing educationally uh, a lot of what you've been sharing clinically. Um, And so I want to thank you for having that wonderful aha moment. And um, thank you for making a difference in so many lives. So we're we're on similar paths and uh, certainly are kindred spirits in that sense. Uh, we, of course, work with all cancers, but I know your your special focus is breast cancer because you've been twice hit, and um, uh, in, in the case of your mother and yourself. And uh, I, I know that uh, there, there are many myths about breast cancer, cancer in general, but especially about breast cancer that really keep women in fear. And I, I wonder if you'll share some of them with us. Absolutely. You know, one of the biggest complaints and actually one of the reasons why I started doing a coaching program is because when I started sharing my story uh, and women were reaching out to talk with me, I realized that so many were, were confused and frustrated and overwhelmed by all the information out there. And they, they really didn't understand what cancer was and and you know certain things that they could do to prevent it and to heal it and as as your audience knows that you know cancer is the symptom it's not the cause so we really have to go beyond that um, you know, one of the, the myths that apply to breast cancer for women especially is that their hormones cause cancer. You know, I talk to women all the time that are put on, you know, aromatase inhibitors or, or, or hormone suppressing drugs because they have an estrogen positive or progesterone positive breast cancer. But what they have to realize, if their hormones did cause cancer, then every 20-year-old on the planet would, would have cancer. Exactly. So it's not so much our hormones hormones, but it's the what we call the chemical estrogens or the xenoestrogens that we're exposed to. Um, chemicals and like in herbicides and pesticides can stimulate and mimic estrogen. The aluminum in your antiperspirant can stimulate estrogen and act as a metalloestrogen. The mercury in your dental amalgams does the same thing. The parabens, the lotions and potions, the you know sunscreens, all those things that we put on our on our body can can actually mimic and stimulate estrogen. So we get an overload of estrogen from the environment and from those those chemicals. And then secondly, if we are not metabolizing or methylating estrogen properly, um, because maybe there's a, a genetic component there, or perhaps there's a, a weakness in the liver in phase one, phase two detoxification, then those aggressive estrogens keep recirculating. They're not broken down into um, um, metabol- a harmless metabolites that can be secreted. And so that's where you get into, you know, problems with the aggressive estrogen. So, you know, the bottom line is, you know, our hormones do not cause cancer. And if we make sure that we eat foods that are high in plant estrogens, um, like flax, ground flax seed, um, you know, beans, legumes, you know, all those things are, are have plant estrogens in them, and they really help to bind and block the estrogen receptors so the aggressive estrogens don't have a chance to get in there and do some work. Absolutely. It's not that estrogen is our enemy. 
It's uh, what type of estrogen that we have and and the synthetics that are uh, synthetic estrogens that the growth hormones that are added to our uh, cattle, etc. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know to show you the power of of just plant. Uh, food uh, as far as phytoestrogens are concerned. Uh, there was a, a um, study done at the University of Toronto in Canada where they they examined women um, that were getting ready to have um, surgery, a lumpectomy to remove the, the breast tumors, and they measured their, their blood markers and they measured the size of the tumors. So for 30 days, they gave them five teaspoons of ground flaxseed in muffins, which the muffins probably contain sugar and white flour but nonetheless you know mm -hmm. they had they had the ground flaxseed and within 30 days they found a drop in um, in the cancer markers as well as the tumor size from 30 to 73 percent just in 30 days and just that by is, that is one of my favorite studies to quote and, and it always leads us to conclude that small changes can produce big results absolutely something as simple as that Great. Now, I know there are other myths, so share some of the others, if you will. Uh, another one of my favorites is that, um, you know, you inherit breast cancer and you basically have no control over your genes. You know, we know that um, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the BRCA gene. And we know that, you know, the Hollywood hype that went along with Angelina Jolie. And, you know, I'm not here to, to judge her. She saw her mother die a very horrible death from cancer and traditional treatment. So, you know, there was a lot of fear. But, you know, a, a lot of women don't realize that the BRCA gene genes are actually good genes. They're tumor suppressor genes that repair DNA damage from natural and medical radiation. So, you know, I wonder where their breaths are getting all this medical radiation. And there's a, a lot of studies that show us that some of the BRCA genes actually help to reduce the risk of breast cancer. And less than 2% of women who have a strong family history actually have a BRCA gene mutation. So unfortunately, you know, the whole Hollywood hype has led to so many women and young women having Just their having breasts cut off. Isn't that sad? Just, just as a result of having a BRCA gene mutation because there's ways to support your your genetic component you know we know now that our dna is not our destiny we know that through the science of epigenetics which means you know studying the gene expression and nutrigenomics which is the study of the science of food that our genes can be turned off and on as a result of specific foods and chemicals good and bad you know stress good and bad stress as well as lack of sleep so um, it's very important for women to know that they have a measure of control on their health um, they're not victims of their dna and their genes absolutely absolutely there's been plenty of research um, in scandinavia about uh, the role that lifestyle choices plays um, uh, being much more important than um, the role that genetics plays. Absolutely. And, you know, simple, something simple as curcumin, for example, can turn off the inflammatory and cancer-promoting genes. Uh, sulforaphane from, in broccoli sprouts, the same thing. I mean, just very, very powerful um, foods that, that can have such a powerful effect on, on our body. For sure. Are there any other myths that you want to uh, mention before we uh, move on? Yes, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, chemicals and, and medications and how um, so many women are prescribed, you know, aromatase inhib inhibitors or hormone suppressing drugs. And we'll just use tamoxifen, <clears throat> excuse me, tamoxifen, for example. Um, most women don't know that tamoxifen is classified as a human carcinogen by the American Cancer Society and the World Health Organization. It's a very dangerous drug. And yet, you know, women have, have been on it for five years and now they're increasing the span to 10 years. But, you know, they don't tell women or they, you know, maybe they take it lightly, but they don't stress that the use of this drug can cause other types of cancers. And I've talked to women who've 
who've had other cancers as a result of being on these kinds of drugs. Um, it can cause stomach cancer, colon cancer, uterine cancer, blood clots, fatty liver. It kills your sex drive and it affects your memory, your headaches, your joints, your nerve system. So, you know, there's really healthier alternatives to look at when it comes to balancing your hormones. That's excellent. And for those readers or listeners who um, have already chosen that path, don't feel that there's nothing left for you and that you're doomed to get a secondary cancer because the other lifestyle choices that we're going to be talking about and that with Dr. V and the ones that we write about all the time on our blog uh, can give you the power to stay out of trouble in the future. And thank you for saying that, Susan. You know, I, I really um, I want to stress that I'm not anti-medicine, um, and, and I respect and honor every kind of choice that a woman makes. The key is to really make informed decisions. And if you choose to be on tamoxifen, that's perfectly fine if that feels right for you. However, there are things that you can do to support your body, as Susan mentioned, that we'll get into Right, right. And, and um, you know, when we talk about breast cancer prevention, it's really just being aware and early detection, and, and that is very disempowering. So what could women do that's really proactive, that really can make a difference in their risk for breast cancer? Well, the first thing I would say is to really... Um, watch your food, you know, let food be your medicine. Um, the number one food that I would encourage women to avoid is sugar. Um, processed sugar, complex carbohydrates, you know, all of those really minimize your sugar intake because we know that cancer cells have um, more insulin receptors than a healthy cell. We know that cancer cells th survive and thrive through fermentation of sugar. They don't breathe oxygen like our healthy cells do. And so the less sugar you can feed your body, the better. And if you focus on a very alkaline and raw diet, you know, I, I, there's no cookie cutter diet, as you know, but there's certainly balance that you can attain, you know, 80% raw, 80% alkaline as much as you can, you know, that's going to keep the body alkaline because we know that um, cancer thrives in a very acidic medium and we want to create a more alkaline environment in our body as much as possible. And if our uh, listeners are not anywhere near 80% um, and don't feel that's even possible, um, then even if you aim for 50% raw foods and 50% alkalinizing foods, mostly from fresh fruits and vegetables, you're already going to make a big difference in your health. Absolutely. And it's it's baby steps. You know, it's it's a matter of um, like in, in my book, I talk about doing a pantry swap. You know, you don't necessarily have to throw everything out of your cupboards, but you start with one thing, you know, replace replace the refined sugars with, um, you know, stevia or maybe even xylitol or, or, you know, some other more complex sweeteners. You know, remove the canned foods and try using fresh, even if it's just a few more times a week. So mm -hmm. it's little things that you can do to really improve your health. Little steps and choose your battles. Right. Now, food is very important to us, extremely important to us at BeatCancer.org. Um, but once we have our diet uh, where it needs to be or as close as we can get it, are there any other um, supplements that you recommend to, uh, or supplemental nu nutrients that you recommend uh, for preventing breast cancer or recurrence of breast cancer? Well, there's, there's several things that can be done. Um, one of the simplest ones, which is a great starting point, is that if women get their vitamin D levels tested and they try to keep them between 80 and 100 NGs per ml, just remember the 80 to 100, that can slash your breast cancer risk by 83%. Oh, wow, just keeping huge. your vitamin D levels up. And studies have shown that, um, you know, the, the use of vitamin D while someone has breast cancer dramatically increases their survival rate. Um, there was an ABC uh, news uh, show not too long ago, and... Um, 
they they took uh, breast cancer cells grown in a petri dish and they they dropped you know some solutions of vitamin D and and they showed under the microscope that the vitamin D literally caused the cancer cells to die. So very very powerful. Something as simple as vitamin D and of course getting it through sunshine and and um, you know supplementation. Yeah, and and that, the excuse me one second. The frustrating thing is that. It, most women ask their oncologists about nutrition and the doctors say, I don't want you taking any supplements because it may interfere with your treatment when the truth is it may potentiate your treatment if you take Absolutely. the right supplements. Absolutely. And it's going to support your body to endure the treatments. And, and um, you know, we know uh, we're both, you know, avid users of Juice Plus, you know, the fruits and vegetables and capsules. And um, just adding something as simple as, as that can really have a huge impact on the body's ability to detoxify and to nourish while they're going through such stressful uh, treatments like that. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, other supplements that women should be aware of? Another key one would be iodine supplementation. Now, um, when it comes to your health, don't guess. You know, always make sure that you know how much to supplement with. And uh, iodine is one of those things as well. There's a simple 24-hour iodine loading test that you can get on my website. And basically, it... It helps you to see how deficient you are in iodine. And once you see how deficient you are, then you know how much to supplement with. Now, iodine is extremely important. And, you know, this is based on 20 plus years of research by Dr. Brownstein and Dr. Mm -hmm. Abrams. Mm -hmm. um, and they they showed a, a clear correlation between low iodine, low thyroid, and breast cancer. In fact, they they found that women who were on uh, thyroid medication were twice as likely to develop breast cancer because the medication was just masking the symptom. It, you know, the thyroid was still not functioning well, and and iodine. Um, I'm sorry, breast cells are very very um, sensitive to iodine. Right? Yeah, very sensitive to iodine. And and with all the, the bromides and the halides and the chlorides and the fluorides that we're exposed to, it tends to kick out any type of iodine that we have in our body. So iodine supplementation is very important for, for overall health. Is there a particular uh, brand um, that, that you mentioned or uh, several types of iodine that you are comfortable with? Well, um, the used iodorol used to be the brand, but um, when Dr. Abrams passed away by a freakish accident, um, the company stopped producing it. Um, so now I use a company called Seeking Health, and this is on my website as well. But it, it's not just plain iodine, but it also uses potassium iodide, uh, which you really need both types of iodine. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, so, uh, we know from research that it may take, uh, five to eight to even 10 years for, uh, cancer to, uh, manifest itself as a lump in the body. Um, and we have one particular technology that we'd love to recommend. Would you share, and I know you know about that one, are there any specific tests that you like to help detect breast cancer at a very early stage, much earlier than conventional mammograms can detect it at? Well, there are, there are several. Um, the first one I'll start with is thermography. Um, now, thermography cannot diagnose cancer, but what it can tell you is that if there's uh, inflammation or changes in the physiological structure of the, of the body. Um, so thermography basically reads the infrared heat that's coming off the body. When there's, inf when there's um, inflammation, there's going to be added heat, so the image is going to show different red spots. Um, on a breast, for example, um, if there's a, a site that is red and you, and you see the blood flow going to that area, chances are there may be a malignancy developing because uh, tumors will create their own blood flow, more blood flow, more heat. Um, but the beauty of thermography is that it can detect um, tumors or, or unhealthy tissue when it's simply the size of a pinhead, you know, very, very small. Right. So it's a very sensitive technology. And again, it, don't, it doesn't diagnose cancer, but it can give you an idea of what's going on physiologically in your body. The other beauty is that it delivers no radiation. If you wanted to take a heat photo every day, you could. 
Absolutely. <laughs> no radiation, no compression, no pain, no damage. It's yeah, it's pain free. It's beautiful technology and and I've I've used it since yeah, well almost 10 years now so it's yeah, it's a great great tool um then you then you look at the the laboratory aspect the blood test now these are not tests that traditional medicine recommends uh if they did they would save millions of lives yeah. uh one of the tests is called oncoblot o n c o b l o t oncoblot and what that test does is it um it uh, searches in the blood for a certain protein called ENOX2 protein. It's a protein that cancer cells secrete. And they've discovered this technology that they can tell you if you have cancer and where you have cancer in the body. It's, it's fabulous. It can be used as a screening tool to see if you have cancer. But then I've also used it with women who have gone on a, um, you know, a traditional journey, perhaps with, with medicine, and they want to really know if they're, they are cancer free. And it's, it's an excellent tool to use. Is that um, expensive, Dr. V? Um, well, the average cost is about eight hundred. Um, it's not covered by insurance, of course. Um, but you know, it's it's such a, a worthwhile test that it's. I think it's you know, as as more and more people learn about it, I'm, I'm sure the cost will start going down. I think that's wonderful because, as as you know, um, these uh, mammograms and the CT scans that I write about a lot. Uh, they deliver so much radiation that they may actually trigger additional malignancies, and that's been uh, researched pretty well. Um, and so why would we want to use a technology frequently to see if something else is arriving when that something else may actually be triggered by all that radiation? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's another test, too, that is is. Um, has been around for many, many years. It's, uh, it's called the TK1 enzyme test. Uh, when, when, DNA, when the DNA in cells replicate, they give off a, uh, an enzyme called TK1. Now, healthy cells will absorb the TK1. Cancer cells secrete the TK1, and it's found then in the bloodstream. And this test has been used for you know, over 30 years in 30 countries, um, and there's hundreds of peer review studies done on it. Um, but again, it's one of those things that it's, it's not that easy to, to, to get done. I used to use a couple of companies, but then the reagents were, were hard to get, and, and uh, now I can't get that test temporarily for now. Um, but there's another test called Nagalase. Uh, Nagalase test, um, basically Nagalase is another enzyme that cancer cells secrete, and that enzyme actually puts our immune system to sleep. It's phenomenal how smart these cancer cells try mm -hmm. to be. And so, again, higher levels of Nagalase in your blood can indicate that there's, you know, quite a bit of, of uh, cancer um, activity. And lastly, I like to use another test called the cancer profile test, which looks at uh, HCG, which is a hormone that cancer cells produce. And so it, they look at two different subfractions in the blood. They look at it in the urine. They also check PHI, uh, which is um, a malignancy enzyme uh, and hormone that cancer cells secrete. Uh, so there's there's a lot of other tests out there that you can look at to really be proactive with prevention. The traditional medical uh, tests and blood tests that doctors use, unfortunately, can be very inaccurate and oftentimes don't detect cancer at a very, very sensitive stage. Well, this is very, very encouraging. Now, I know that you also uh, use bioenergetics and meridian stress analysis. If you would, can you share with us what those techniques are about. Yes, this was a, a technology that was discovered, uh, I don't know, maybe 100 years ago um, by a homeopath and uh, Dr. Vohl, V-O-H-L. He was a German homeopath medical doctor. And uh, he basically realized that on the acupuncture meridians, you can, uh, you can read the electrical charge on those points because we know our bodies are electrical beings. So, so from there, a technology ensued and, and was developed, and it's called bioenergetic testing. So um, you can literally test 
hundreds of different points on the hands and the feet to read um, the energy of that organ. So for example, if you touch your index finger on this on the knuckle at a particular area, that reads the meridian for the large intestine. If um, the normal reading is 50, that means balance. But if the reading is at a 20 or 30, let's say, that means that energetically that organ is weak. What can you do to strengthen it? Well, with that technology, you can actually um, have the patient hold, let's say, a probiotic or a particular herb to support the large intestine and touch the that spot on the intestinal point again on the finger if the reading goes up, then we know that that particular substance that the patient is holding or is on the plate will bring that organ to balance. If it doesn't, then we know it's not compatible and it's not going to do anything. So, so it's, it's technology when, that I used when I was in, in active practice for about 25 years. Um, I still have equipment with me. I don't t- particularly use it. I just uh, you know use it on my family and myself. <laughs> Well, uh, no, I would have been happy to be your patient because <laughs> uh, we've been in this field for almost 38 years and um, well, as educators, and the Vol machine was always what we talked about, and then it became, uh, I think there's other technology, the Antero, the Vega, a couple of other mm-hmm. uh, pieces of equipment. But what's important is for patients to know that um, even more relevant than do you have cancer or are you testing negative for cancer? It's what's going on with your biochemical individuality that can give us a clue as to where your body chemistry is out of balance that may lead you towards or away from disease, depending if we correct that imbalance. And we as educators, we can talk about your lifestyle. We can coach you on diet and stress management. But at some point, I like to make referrals to practitioners such as you were, who uh, can zero in on the subtleties of body chemistry and give you a real understanding of your body's ability to fight serious disease and make corrections if indicated. Yeah, it's been, it's a, it's a wonderful technology. And, um, I know that when I was using it, I, it was so useful even for checking dental issues. You know, we know that there's a dental connection to our health and, and, you know, instead of having to, not instead of, but, uh, in, in working in conjunction with a, a dentist, a biological dentist, then we could really, um, pinpoint, you know, the toxic focal areas in the teeth and, and how the body was being affected by it. It's beautiful work. Beautiful. So, um, We don't want to uh, imply that we can diagnose cancer with those tests. But what we can do is evaluate the efficiency of body chemistry that is probably even more important. Absolutely. So um, if a patient wants to heal uh, with, maybe a patient has had surgery, but is not particularly interested in using the recommended Uh, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, or hormone ablation therapy, or radiation treatment? What are some of the less toxic methods that you advocate? Well, uh, first and foremost, always work with a a professional and uh, make sure that you're monitoring your health and that you're not just guessing. Um, Too many women that I've worked with, uh, you know, that I've spoken to, you know, they feel that if they just juice and change their diet and add a few supplements that their cancer is going to go away. You have to be very focused and very targeted and take it very seriously. Um, So a few uh, herbal therapies that I've worked with and have have worked very well, Uh, one of them is bloodroot, for example, Uh, bloodroot. Uh, is an herb that has a phytochemical in it called sanguinarine. And sanguinarine basically is is a form of herbal chemotherapy. It literally kills cancer cells but does not uh, affect your healthy cells. Um, And it's very important, too, that you understand that a lot of these 
uh, things that I'm talking about are evidence-based. Uh, in my book, I've got over 500 published studies that um, refer to the different um, you know, points that I'm trying to make because it's very, very important for people to know that you know, this is not just new age fluff fluff, you know, that this, you know, that these herbs and these foods are, are based on, on science and fact. So if you Google, if you go to PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D, med, pubmed.org, that's the National Library of Science. And it shows you all the different studies that have been, um, been published. And you can just Google, uh, you can just put in the search bar, you know, vitamin C and breast cancer or blood root and breast cancer and, you know, whatever. And you'll see all the different studies. So, so back to, <laughs> I was kind of a little segue. No, it's great uh, because <laughs> evidence-based is important because the message we get from conventional oncology is that there's no science. Correct. Correct. Um, another protocol that's very important is uh, the use of high doses of proteolytic enzymes. Now, enzymes are extremely important because they help to eat away, so to speak, at the uh, cell wall of the cancer cell. Cancer cells have 17 layers of fibrin, are very tough. And so the enzymes help to eat away at that outer cell membrane and make the cells much more vulnerable to various therapies and as well as to the immune system. Um, another great protocol is something called solicinium. Uh, the oral version of that is called orasal. And basically solicinium is... Um, a glyconutrient that easily penetrates the cancer cell. And once inside the cancer cell, it disables the enzyme nagalase that we talked about that puts the en the uh, your immune system to sleep. And so that, along with the use of a um, alpha lipoic palladium liquid called poly MBA, very, very powerful combination. Uh, in fact, uh, Dr. John Forsyth, a homeopathic oncologist in Nevada, uh, found that he had, you know, an 85% success rate with, um, breast cancer, stage four breast cancer and prostate cancer using that protocol. So you can, you can do it orally and you can also do it with an IV if you work with a practitioner. Right. And I know it's, that's not inexpensive. So it's wonderful that we have many options. Yes. Yes. And then, then we can look at something like, um, the cannabis oils, you know, the CBD from hemp, which again, you know, lots of research, how it, uh, causes cancer cells to implode and boosts your immune system. Um, just adding something as simple as a very potent formula of broccoli sprouts, you know, dehydrated broccoli sprouts that are enzymatically active and high in sulforaphane that also has been shown to kill cancer cells. Uh, something as simple as garlic, you know, swallowing, you know, chopping up some garlic cloves and, and swallowing those, spirulina, you know, very high in anti-cancer properties, curcumin, uh, curcumin especially for triple negative uh, breast cancer, um, fermented uh, soy products such as halen, um, H-A-E-L-A-N, is an extremely potent um, fermented soy product that has a very uh, protective effect on, on preventing breast cancer, but also very therapeutic uh, when women are on chemotherapy or when they're on a healing journey. Right. And, and uh, there is quite a lot of controversy about soy. Um, <clears throat> if you stop to define your terms, the type of soy, um, the quality of the soy, uh, very often a lot of that controversy goes away. Um, in terms of whether soy is safe or dangerous for a uh, cancer patient, especially a breast cancer patient. But I've never found a problem with the fermented ones other than the taste. Correct, <laughs> correct. And when you look at, um, you know, history, I mean, we Asian women have, have uh, you know, used soy products for thousands of years. And for a while, they did not even have a word for menopause because there was no such thing as hot flashes, mm -hmm. you know, until they started adapting a Western diet. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Um, so a uh, couple more things. Tell us about your seven essentials concept and why you consider them a foundation for health. 
Well, there, you know, there are seven basic steps that if you follow them, it basically covers everything that, you know, that can uh, allow dis-ease to uh, start developing in your body. So essential number one is, is food. And we talked quite a bit about food, but that, you know, that's your foundation, you know, let food be your medicine. Uh, I often tell my clients when it comes to eating, you know, you have a choice. You either feed your body or feed the cancer. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. <laughs> you know, it doesn't get more complicated. <clears throat> Essential number two is to learn to reduce your toxic exposure. Um, we know we live in a toxic world. However, there are a lot of things that we can do to reduce our toxic exposure by making informed decisions about what we're eating, what we're putting on our body, in our homes, in our in our yards. Um, the different detoxification um, organs, you know, how to support them, the liver, the colon, the kidneys, uh, doing things that, that help to detoxify the body like sweating and, and you know, exercising and, and uh, coffee enemas. You know, there's a lot of things you can do to, you know, reduce that toxic exposure in your body. Essential number three is to balance your energy. And we know we're electrical beings and, you know, we're, we're one billionth physical matter. The rest is all energy. So what can we do to keep our energy balanced? Well, sleep is extremely important. Exercise is important. Balancing our hormones, um, you know, making sure that, that uh, you know, we live a very balanced life in, in all aspects. Essential number four is to heal your emotional wounds. And, and that was a big one for me. That, mm -hmm. I think that was a very big contributing factor um, that I had to address. And, and a lot of women are uncomfortable with that because they're really good at, you know, taking on the cancer and healing the body, but, you know, a little shy about looking at the emotional um, aspects of it. And, and we know that our emotions, our thoughts affect our immune system and affect how we heal. So Absolutely. That, that's a very important one. And then essential number five is to embrace biological dentistry. Um, you know, we know that our, our teeth and what we have in our teeth can affect our health in a very big way, not only chemically, but um, energetically, because our teeth are connected to our organs through the acupuncture meridian system. Um, and number six is to repair your body with therapeutic plants, which we talked about. And then number seven is very early detection with thermography and specific blood tests. So there you have it. It's a beautiful plan. And Thank you. Uh, even, no, it's really fantastic. It, uh, it seems, may seem overwhelming to some people because just even changing your diet could be overwhelming. But just understand that I, I know you agree with me, Dr. V. Cancer is not there one day and not there the, uh, another day. It, it happens on a continuum. And so any one of these seven approaches can already move you uh, a step or two away from the cancer process. And then later on, you can impl implement more of this and move a little further away from the cancering process. So people don't have to feel that if they don't do a perfect job, there's no point in making any effort. Absolutely. One little thing can make a big, big difference, like we, we saw with just with the, you know adding the, the ground flaxseed. So... It's, uh, it takes, you know, five to eight years for cancer to show up as a lump or a bump. So, you know, you've got a lot of time to prevent things and to turn things around. That's great. Now, I know that your website is, is uh, just uh, tremendously valuable in terms of the information. And there are also some uh, items that you uh, offer for sale on your website. Is that correct? I do, yes, uh, breastcancerconquer.com, and then you can just go to shop, and um, many of the tests that we spoke about, some of the nutrients that we spoke about today are available. Um, my book, Heal Breast Cancer Naturally, is also available on the, on the website and, and on Amazon. And um, if you want to connect with me, you can send me an email at drv, drv, at breastcancerconquer.com. And of course, you'll find me on Facebook as well. And that's, that's really fantastic because I think uh, we've uh, raised more questions than we've answered, although we've, we've tried to provide a great deal of information. But I want our listeners to know that um, just look for the special link to Dr. V's site uh, on our podcast blog. And if you buy anything, I think this is correct, Dr. V, if you buy anything at, at the link, um, you will donate a portion of that sale to beatcancer.org. 
to Absolutely. help us provide, continue to provide the services to cancer patients that we uh, provide. Yeah, absolutely. So we thank you for that in advance. Um, anything, any last thought that you would like to leave our listeners with? Well, I always like to end with uh, one of my favorite proverbs about the caterpillar. It's just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. I love it. And, <laughs> and so, so many of us may be on, on various stages of a journey, whatever that may be. And, you know, we may feel like that caterpillar. We may not know what the next step is. It may feel, you know, dark and we may feel cornered and, and you know, just don't know what the next step is or what's going to happen. But if we trust the process and have faith in the laws of nature, the laws of the universe, we know that we will emerge merge on the other side a happier and healthier person i couldn't add one more word except for thank you you're very welcome it was thoroughly enjoyable thank you so much for joining us on the beat cancer answer if you learned just one thing today about how to prevent cope with or beat cancer then we have succeeded in our mission for more information or assistance visit our website at beatcancer.org remember to sign up for our educational email series and get your free gift Join in the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, where you can meet others who think just like you. We appreciate all of your feedback and love your suggestions. Please also remember to rate us on iTunes. Your positive ratings help us to get discovered so we can save more lives. Thank you again for listening, and best wishes for good health from all of us at BeatCancer.org.